Welcome back design students. In this video we're going to continue our game asset project by preparing this ammo crate for export and then import into Unreal Engine. So let's get started. The first thing I like to do is create a copy of the scene file so I don't overwrite the file that I want to keep. So I'm now working on number four of this scene file and the original scene file is preserved. So let's start by deleting the history. And then let's delete things we don't need in this scene. We don't need the lights. We don't need the shadow plane. All we need are the mesh objects. And let's turn off lights and shadows in the viewport so we can see what we're doing. So we want to be able to animate this when we get it into our game. It might be nice if the player could walk up to it and have it open so that they can take possession of something. So in order to do that we need to make sure that the pivot point for the top is in the right place. Right now it's in the middle. It needs to be where the hinge would be. So to edit the pivot point you can do that a couple of ways in Maya. You can either come to the tool settings and click edit pivot or you can push D on the keyboard and that's a shortcut for the same thing. So let's move this over to one corner and then switch to the side viewport and zoom in on that corner of the lid and pull that pivot point down so it's positioned exactly where a hinge would be. Since we want the lid to animate, we need to bring this in as two separate pieces, the base and the lid. And now I've combined all the mesh pieces for the lid into one mesh that I renamed top. And I combined all the other pieces into one mesh that I called bottom. Now if we were to export this now and bring it into Unreal, once it comes into Unreal, the pivot point would be reset to the origin, the center of the 3D space. We want the pivot point to stay right here where we placed it. So we've got to do a couple of things before we export this for import into Unreal. First thing we need to do is, is export the bottom because the pivot point for the bottom really doesn't matter. In order to export the bottom, the first thing we're going to do is freeze its transforms. So let's come up to Modify. And what that does, if we look in the channel box, you can see it zeroed out all the um, positional and rotational information for this object. So with this base object selected and its transformations frozen, we can now export it. Let's go to File, Export Selection. Export All would export everything into the scene, and we don't want to do that yet. Export Selection, and then check these settings here. We want to make sure that under Geometry, Smoothing Groups is checked. We want to check and see if Animation, Cameras, and Lights, those should all be unchecked. And then check to, under Advanced Options, the Axis Conversion, make sure that Y is up. Once you've done that, name this. And then you can put it anywhere. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. Now once we have that exported, we can delete it. And then let's take the top and put it down, down on the ground. And then let's take it and move it over so that the pivot point sits right at the origin. Now let's check it in the top view. Let's switch to wireframe. And the reason we want this here is because Unreal will reset it there anyway. So we might as well just put it there. Once we have that done, we need to permanently apply that position of the pivot point. To do that, we come up to Modify, Bake Pivot. And then we also need to freeze its transformations, just like we did for the base. And now we can export this. So we're going to go to File, Export Selection. 
I'm just going to put it on my desktop. And I'm going to name it Chest Top. And now we can close Maya. And we don't need to save this. We've already saved it when we started. We don't want to save all the deletions and everything we did. And we now have two FBX files right here and right here that we will now import into Unreal. I should have explained that you always need to make sure you choose FBX or OBJ for your export to, for your export file type when you're using Unreal. FBX is the best. FBX is the best choice. So let's go to Unreal now. And if you already have a project that you want to put this into, fine, open it up. I'm going to create a new one. So here's my new project. I'm going to navigate to the main content folder. And then I'm going to click add slash import and select import to game. And I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to find crate bottom and crate top. And then we get some more choices here. Uh, everything is fine to just leave alone and click import all. And these objects are now imported into Unreal as game assets. Let's check the top and make sure the pivot point stayed where it was supposed to. One of the things you might notice right away is how small the object is. That's okay. Just switch to your scale tool by pushing R on your keyboard and scale it up. And you can clearly see that the pivot point stayed where we put it and that's what we want. So let's go ahead and delete that out of the scene. You'll also notice that the material does not have the textures. We need to import that as well. So go to import, import to game, and navigate to the project folder and find the texture we created in Photoshop. Also bring in the normal map if you have one. And here are the two textures. And now we need to reconstruct the material. So double click on the crate material that has been created for you. And then make this window small. Because what we need to do is grab these two textures here. And the window may disappear for you. If it does, just bring it back to the front. And then drag these two materials into your material editor. And then delete this material that came in with it, or this texture that came in with it, and then connect these up to the proper spots. The albedo map goes to the base color, and the normal map goes to the normal node. Now we're not quite done yet. We need to do something with the metallic, the specular, and the roughness. Since there's nothing attached to these nodes, Unreal doesn't quite know what to do with them, so it wants to make it shiny for example. So we need to tie these nodes down with what's called a constant. So drag off of one of them and type in constant. And then you can take this constant node and hit control C or command C and command V and paste it a couple of times and so you have two copies and then connect to the specular and the roughness. Now for this, since it's a wooden object, it does not need to be metallic, so zero is fine. It does not need any specular highlights, so zero is fine here. But the roughness needs to be not zero, but one. So select the roughness constant and come over here to the settings and change that to one. And then save your material. And when you return, you will see that it is now applied to your new game asset. So select both of these things and drag them into the scene. And then hit F to focus on them. And then we need to make them large. We need to scale them up. So grab the middle of the scale tool 
and scale them up. Should probably put them over near the player so we can judge the scale. And I think that's probably about right. Maybe just a little bigger. And then we need to grab the top and move it into place. Notice how it's snapping. The snapping comes from here. Right now the snapping is set to 10. Let's make it 1 and then move it into place on top of the base. Now you may not be able to position it quite right because of the snapping. If that happens, then simply turn off snapping altogether by clicking this little grid icon here. And then there's no snapping at all. And you can place it however you need to. If you get this error here about the lighting, then come over to your world outliner and find the lighting click light source and make it movable. Also make the skylight movable. And then let's check and make sure this thing is sitting on the ground. So we now have our originally created game asset created in Maya and textured and mapped in Maya and Photoshop imported into Unreal as a usable game asset. When we come back in the next video we're going to animate this and program it so that when the player walks up to it it will open. And I'll see you then.